So today I want to show some uh, deep frying of ABS parts. Well, not really deep frying. More like acetone vaporizing ABS parts. So what I have here is a glass lid on a fry daddy. Something I wasn't using. 90 degree metal angles held in by magnets. And these four pieces that elevate it are actually the same four points of the piece of glass that I use right here to drop down in my fry daddy when I put my parts on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is from my previous time of doing my frying, I want to make sure I remove any residue from my last parts I had on there. It will really mess up the new parts. So with a razor blade, I'm going to clean this real fast. Make sure all the old ABS that leaked onto here is cleared off. And I got a clean piece of glass ready to start the new part. There we go. So today we're going to be doing 3D Kit Bash Raven Skull. I don't know if you can see it in this light. Sort of. Kind of bad lighting. But black love mine. That club doesn't help. But we're going to be doing the Raven's Call today. And, uh, well, hopefully we'll get a nice piece out of it. One of the tips I want to give you about this, though, is there's a little piece in the bottom here that has a little hole in it. I'm actually going to take a piece of filament. I'm going to use an eyedropper, drop some acetone down in there, and then with the filament, put a piece in that's about a half inch long to fill that so that way it doesn't create a hole when I do this acetone vaporization. So let me cut the piece of filament for the size I need. There we go. So anything with a hole I try to fill it with the same color filament before I do this. So we have our filament cut to about a half inch for the size I need. I have a glass eyedropper here with acetone so we can put just one drop down that hole and that will hold this filament in place. Pretty much glue it in there is what it's going to do. Push it in the rest of the way and put a little drop on top to seal it. Give that a second to dry. While that's drying, let's go ahead and put some acetone in the fry daddy. So I'm just going to put a little bit in there. Now usually I'm frying at parts that are about a layer height of 0.15. This one was done in layer height of 0.24. So usually where it takes five minutes, this will probably take about eight. So we're gonna set the part on the glass, line up my four corners of the glass with the four corners I have in there to keep the tray elevated. Try to put it as much to the center as possible. Put our light on, and I'm gonna plug it in and count to five or maybe seven seconds until I hear it sizzle. Seven seconds I got my first sizzle. Let it go for about 15 seconds. Give it another five. Now usually I might give it a third break, 15 seconds and then another five. But that's if I'm trying to get the vapor all the way to the top of the lid if it's a big part. This one's only a couple of inches high. Looking through the glass I can tell you 
it's already hitting the top but not all the way so let me just give it one more short so three five seconds over about a minute to a minute and a half and now I actually can see the vaporization accumulating on the top of the lid here so we do have a full vapor cloud inside I think that pretty much does it. We'll give it about six minutes and see where it's at when we come back. Now because of the fine point tip on the beak of this raven, I may actually break this down into two separate treatments. Because if I treat it 10 minutes to get rid of all the lines, what I'll end up doing is deforming that tip of the beak but if I give it five minutes and then let it cool down for an hour and then give it another five minute treatment I can polish out all the lines of the layering plastic give it the shine and gloss I want but without softening the whole entire model too much and affecting the shape of the beak or the bones underneath it where it's sitting at on that glass So each model you do may be slightly different and you have to gauge it by, you'll know the first couple of times you do your first few acetone washes, do it on parts that you don't care about, do some testing, see how it affects the plastic so you can get a feel for it and you can gauge it on how long you need it to be based on the layer height that you printed at and the complexity or, or small parts or fine tips in this case of the beak of the model itself. Okay, we got about six minutes on the clock. We got a good vapor going on here. I got condensation on the lid. I'm really trying to get a view at it so I can see if it's about where I want it. Well, the condensation drops, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, I think we're close. Now I know this is going to continue treating a little bit when I pull it out. Let me go and switch over to a flash here so you can see the shine on it. Alright, I got the flash on the camera. Let's go ahead and pull this out. I'll tilt my glass a little bit to get all the acetone to drip off. Only do this if you know the part's actually in there long enough to stick. Otherwise your part may actually fall off too. I'm just going to get all of it off, so let me wipe it off in that corner. And what we have here is a really nice raven beak from Boneheads. Really good shine. I love the way the eye cavities turned out there. You can see how the tip of the nose is kind of melted to the glass. So now I'm going to very carefully just lift this tip up. Just a little bit. But I don't want to lift it up too much because I'll rock it back and I'll actually bottom out the back of the skull, which is what I don't want to do. So we need to just pry it up a little bit to get it off the glass. But carefully. And how soft is it? Okay, there we go. Came off really nice, a lot easier than I thought it would have. That's good. As a matter of fact, now that I know how easy it picks up, because it's still wet, I'm going to do that one more time. But this time, put a small piece of paper towel underneath it. What I want to do is, uh, Kind of suck up that acetone that's under the beak to stop it from melting anymore. There we go. 
and in a couple of minutes once the outside cools down and it's not very really tacky I can pick it up carefully and maybe shape that beak a little bit back to its fine point let's look under the back here make sure I didn't bottom out the back at all nope I didn't I see the piece of filament I stuck in there didn't quite mold perfectly flat so I'll probably push that in while it's still soft again have to wait for the tackiness to free up on it before I attempt to pick it up to do any molding like that so just a little bit longer it's smooth now it's not tacky but give it a, give it about another minute let that tackiness calm down on it let's see what we have here I think we're pretty much good. So again, I'm going to try to lift this up evenly. Minimal damage as it lifts off the glass. There you go. Perfect. I'll grab it at the two least points. Let's take a look here. Yeah, we do have to kind of find that tip up a little bit there's a little piece I'm going to end up snipping off of there because the way I'm molding this out but I'll wait until it hardens before I snip it of course and again the piece of filament here that I put in wasn't short enough so I'm going to push that in just a little bit. I might put another drop of acetone on there and see if I can eat it off to get it to level out. Actually, that's not too bad. But right now, it feels pretty good. The beak looks good. It's a little piece I'll tip off snip off there it's like a little thread that's coming down on it that's easy enough to do most of the lines came out really nice and that's your basic acetone wash right there all said and done there's not much to it just take the proper safety precautions well ventilated area acetone is flammable also evaporates very fast Health risks of vaporization are uh, questionable. Some people get headaches. Some people get sore throats. But in a well ventilated area, you shouldn't shouldn't get it either. Uh, if you're really worried about health risks, then buy yourself a gas mask with gas vapors, with the gas charcoals and the filters. But acetone is actually a naturally produced chemical of the human body. And if you're a type 1 diabetic, you actually produce probably four times as much acetone as a normal non-diabetic person would. So, I can see I, I, I want this back piece to mend a little bit better. So I will be putting this in for probably another five minutes, but like I said, second treatment an hour later. Not right away, otherwise the whole thing will get too soft. And I'll see if I can file this little piece down just a little bit more so it will mend better on my second treatment. Uh, but beyond that, I'm very happy with the six minute treatment in the Fire Daddy. Looks good. We're going to call that job done.